This is a follow-up video to my 6.5 Creedmoor case feeder for the Dillon 550. So if you decide to put a uh, case feeder on your 550 through the 3D printing files we get out in Thingiverse uh, for different calibers, then you may be wondering, what are my options for feeding the case feeder? And you can use just a clear drop tube or get a little more elaborate and put a collator in this system. So I have connected a Dillon collator to this case feed project. Uh, I initially thought I was going to build one with the open bullet feeder project and I'm still doing that but uh, for this installation here I mean I'm going to use the Dillon it's just they're just nicer you know can't can't beat it the, the Dillon quality of their case feeders. So let's get into how this works. So you may see back here I've got a three quarter inch pipe and then I've got a flange bolted or screwed to the table that holds this pipe here. This pipe also holds my open bullet feeder feeder. So the pipe holds up the Dillon case feeder. Now the Dillon case feeder where it inserts so you can actually see that into the case feeder uh, is a rectangle hole. The diameter of this pipe is almost the same. So what I ended up doing is uh, marking about six inches down on the pipe, going to my belt sander and rolling the pipe around the belt sander to take off just a couple thousandths. That's all you need to do is remove a couple thousandths. Then this round tube will fit into the square hole with ease and have a nice solid fit and I need to set screw in the back to secure that top of the pipe. The height of this can be, you know, there is a, you can only go so short uh, because of the design of this case feeder uh, collator setup, um, but it doesn't need to be as high as what I've got here. I got it plenty high because I want to get the case feeder above the bullet feeder and the bullet feeder, I want it high enough to work the 550, but you could bring this down lower than what it is. This allows like quite a few in the tube. Um, <clears throat> so here is the 5 8 OD half inch ID tube. You saw in the previous video that I cut the length. <clears throat> I then made a case feeder drop tube, not a bullet feeder drop tube. Pretty much looks like a bullet feeder drop tube, modified to fit six five cases, and put a switch. The switch, um, you can't get these from uh, the previous vendor from the Open Bullet Feeder Project, um, but Dylan sells uh, an identical switch, and I will put the part number, the dropper, uh, this, the lever arm on the switch initially straight, so I bent it to match the profile of most of the bullet feeder drop two switches, which is kind of bows and it comes out flat. And now what's interesting about this setup here, unlike any other case feeder, is typically a case feeder is stationary. None of it's all fixed. None of the feeding system actually moves up and down. And this system here, because the feeder is attached to the ram, it actually goes up and down while you're moving it. So we'll get you a better view of that. So you will see that as the ram goes up, so does the case feed tube. So besides getting your case feeder, try and get it directly over the center line of your uh, your collator, get it over the center line of your actual feeder tube, um, there is likely to be some misalignment. So you could use uh, clear, t uh, clear acrylic tubing for this, uh, but that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility or misalignment. So what I have here are nice stiff springs that allow plenty of misalignment. I think I can misalign it this far you see it like that far and it would still drop a 6.5 case, which is pretty awesome. 
So, what I used here are two benders, the spring two benders. They look like this. So I cut them the length and cut the uh, open-ended piece off to make straight pieces. And this works great. So you can't see it from this angle, but left to right, this is center, but forward to back, there's a slight pitch backwards in the alignment and the zero issue with this going up and down. And this is working out really good. All right. So the other piece of this you need to understand and what to do is you need to basically replicate what Dylan did originally. Now the original switch I have up here is actually still functional. I don't think you can see it in the reflection very well, but the original switch is here in your case feeder and you got your little arm right here. Um, so all that does is just interrupt the current to stop the, uh, the case feeder. That's all it does. So, I did the same thing with the switch that's down here. So there's a wire that just interrupts the current from the case feeder. Now they've got the old AC, DC, uh, you get the AC models, which this is, and then you've got the new variable speed DC models, uh, but the concept's going to be the same. There should be an on and off switch here. I think even on the new DC ones. Um, so the, the current from the AC current coming in comes into the middle pin on this switch. And so what I did is upstream of the switch, I interrupted it. With this switch. And that's all this does. You know, as soon as the lever actuates, the circuit's broken. So it's a normally closed switch, and then as soon as the lever actuates, it's open. So this worked out really good. I, I got lucky where I had already mounted the three quarter inch pipe for my bullet feeder it actually worked, so I didn't have to uh, try and relocate it, but um, you pretty much need to get it as close to the back of the 550 as possible in this case if you're doing it on a 550 you can see it's really close uh, there's not even a quarter inch um, between the back of the 550 and the case feeder um, and this actually here you can actually see better the uh, misalignment where the case feeder actually hangs a little bit too far forward relative to the tube, but again, no big deal because using the springs versus rigid tube, you can count for tons of misalignment in all angles. So if uh, I was to do this, you know, from scratch, I would then try and push this back, maybe not even a 16th of an inch. So it worked out pretty good. Anyway, want to keep this short, um, but this is how one could attach a case correlator to the 550 case feeder. Thanks.